All right, so a while back, I had made a couple of videos on trying to get a headless remote desktop on Linux uh, using Wayland, and that, that had some real trade-offs and compromises that I wasn't a fan of, and I had settled on using Sunshine and Moonlight to handle that, but again, it, it was just always kind of a compromised solution. And at the time I was doing that, I had also put in an order for one of these. It just took a while to come in, and this might end up being the actual long-term solution to getting remote access to your desktop or any other computer, like a server, uh, with no like software or anything really required. And this is the Jet KVM. And so this is an IP KVM that allows you to remote into basically any computer and you don't have to have custom software or anything else. It also allows you to have access to the BIOS because this thing basically will capture the display output and basically talk to the computer to give it inputs for the keyboard and mouse and work like you are sitting there looking at a monitor at the computer. So this, I think, cost about 88 bucks uh, with shipping and everything from their Kickstarter. So. Uh, that's the cost in case you're wondering. It is less than $100. It does cost money, but again, it should be a pretty robust solution. So let me get it open. So we got uh, USB-C, and that's a splitter cable, All right? Got another USB cable, and we have an HDMI. So that uses a mini HDMI into an HDMI output. So basically with these cables, it's gonna output basically mouse and keyboard signals and bring in the monitor outputs so that you can see what will be displayed on the screen. And there you go, that's the device. It's very small, very well made, feeling. I mean, it, it's heavy. So by heavy, you know, 138 grams. So you think about that, it's over a quarter of a pound. So it's a pretty good little solid chunk. The, uh, the outside is metal. So the whole case is metal. So the, the metal case, I'm not sure if this is like extruded. That would make the most sense on a large scale process, but it could be machined. But yeah, it's, it's a one piece kind of external frame and then another little piece screwed on here. So here's the instructions for how this thing works. So First up on the back, you've got your USB connection and the HDMI output, and then you have a port for Ethernet. And so basically it says, look, connect the USB-C and HDMI, connect the Ethernet port, and then you just go through a web browser, navigate to the IP address, and it will feed you your computer interface. And so the way you use these is basically you would set up a VPN access to your home network, tunnel back home, and then once you're on your home network, you just be able to go straight to this IP address. So by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, this little splitter, this is for power. Uh, so this thing's gonna be USB powered, and one issue that you might run into with your computer is if you only run USB to the computer, when the computer's off, it may not supply power to the USB port, which means the Jet KVM won't have power. So you've got a splitter here, and you'll see that one is marked USB, the other power. And so this will allow you to basically plug in a USB charger here, and then this goes out to the computer. And so that will supply this thing uh, with power, even if your computer doesn't through the USB port. And so that's kind of the way this thing is powered and set up. So that's the overview. I'm going to go plug this thing in, hook it up, and we'll take a look and see how it works. All right, so I'm in Chrome, and it is time to try to log into the Jet KVM. And here you can see uh, it just loads right up really fast on the home network. You can set up a password if you want. And it does say you can change this later, so I'm just going to go no password for now. And I will come back and set things back up. All right, so I don't have an HDMI signal, and this is because my computer is not on. So let's see if I can send a wake on LAN signal. I guess I should check for updates first. Let me go ahead and update. All right, updates are done. All right, so let's see, here's our wake on LAN. And so I can add a device. Now my computer is already set up to do wake on LAN because I'd already set up other remote desktop solutions. Now we're going to hit wake. 
All right, so the first issue I'm seeing is that there is no HDMI signal initially. And I think what's happened, you can see it's now giving me one. So I think I'm gonna have to configure my HDMI ports um, and, and make sure that I am plugged into maybe a primary port. You can see I've got bad video. Let's see if I turn on the primary monitor because I think I have them mirrored. And no, so we got some funky stuff going on with the displays here. So. Yeah, so that helped. I uh, just needed to change the video display settings. So optimally, whenever it loads up, I'd get access to the BIOS. So uh, if I'm being a little hesitant right now, it's uh, because it bypassed the BIOS and I didn't get a screen until I was already kind of logged in. So let's see, I am getting a mouse on the screen, although it's not map one to one. Now, one of the issues is I've got a multi-monitor setup and the resolutions aren't matching here. So let's see if I can change the display configuration. Okay, uh, that fixed kind of everything. Setting the system to only use one display kind of fixed all the display problems. And now I have access to, uh, to my desktop. And it seems pretty good. Now I am on my home network, so I can't really, you know, check for a lot of stuff, but you know, I've got pretty good access to everything. It's also very interesting that it shows me the mouse on the local machine that I'm on. And it shows me kind of real time, the mouse on the desktop. And so I can get a good kind of picture of the lag. And you can see it's, it's really not bad at all. Um, as far as that. Now, would you want to do like gaming this way? Maybe not, but certainly for video editing or doing like regular productivity work, uh, this is, this is great. One thing I'm curious, I wonder if, uh, if it will give me audio. Let me, uh, let me pull up a file. So let's see, let's try settings. Let's see, do we have the ability to do audio? All right, so out on the GitHub, there is a question about, hey, there's no audio. And apparently, as of the end of February, audio is not supported. I don't know if there are any plans to support audio. That would be a great feature for me, because again, I'm looking for maybe remote access to my desktop to do some video editing. I do still have another option. Uh, you know, I can still get in with, you know, moonlight and sunshine to do that. And so that may be what I end up doing is kind of a split implementation. So certainly frustrating not to have audio through the interface, but again, fortunately I do have uh, some ways around that. Virtual media looks like you can mount a remote image. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to test that. So I don't know if it's working, but let's look at what else we got in here. Mouse settings, you can hide the cursor while sending mouse movements, change your sensitivity, uh, simulate movements. It's got a built-in jiggler. And then you can do uh, absolute or relative, so that's good. Stream quality adjustment. So I had to adjust this EDID for the display um, to Dell. From the default, I had to change to Dell to get this thing to give me a good video signal. Um, you can change, let's see. Yep. Da -da. identifiers, interesting. So you can change the way it identifies itself to the remote host. Here's where you can change your password. You can also go through cloud, I guess. So I am not gonna put this thing on the cloud. You can change your theme, light and dark. And what do we got in advanced dev channel, developer mode, troubleshooting mode. Interesting, so the, uh, the meta key overrides the capture, meaning I can't use my meta hotkey to get down here into uh, my menu on Fedora because I'm on my Windows laptop and that overrides the, the Jet KVM keyboard capture. Everything else, it, it captures, right, direct, but that meta key back in here, it was going to my system settings. So currently I have it 
set to auto login and that's what you have to do that was like my earlier videos about using wayland and trying to get a remote desktop is that you have to have your system set up to auto log in to the desktop but now that i have the jet kvm i can actually not require that and so now uh whenever i do like a system reboot so let's shut down or actually let's just do a full restart it shouldn't auto log in and the advantage of having the KVM is I should have access to the system even when I'm not logged in because it's actually just reading the HDMI output. So I, I'm going to test this first. I just turned off all the monitors. So let's see if that works or if it really does just have to be in the primary output. Well, that's different. So will it give me... Yeah, so there you go. So I didn't actually have to plug it into the primary HDMI. It, the system, basically, since I had all the monitors on whenever it booted up, let me see, can I actually get in the boot? Yeah, so there you go. See, I've got access to the boot manager, so I can now even boot into different systems. By the way, I do not have Ubuntu installed. That's just a leftover thing uh, that I need to probably clean up in the boot record, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so I can boot into Windows if I need to. I can enter setup. Yeah, so I've got access to the BIOS this way. So there, this is, this is the big, you know, killer feature of the Jet KVM or a KVM system in general, right? They give you access to the entire system because it is not managed by the operating system. It's external hardware, and this is great. So this is exactly what I wanted. Um, the only thing that I want now is just audio. If they can get me audio, uh, this is perfect. Um, again, very responsive. You've got keyboard, you've got mouse, you've got video. Um, you can wake up your computer remotely. You can shut down your computer remotely. Um, yeah, everything, everything works. Everything works great. So now I can... Uh, exit without saving, and now it should boot back into the system. Yeah, and so this will even work with my multi-monitor setup because um, I can configure the desktop once it's booted up to work however I want, and that's pretty satisfying. So there it even gets... All right, so we go through Grub, booting up, and here is one of the advantages. So my system has some issue on occasion where I think it's something to do with one of my Samba shares not registering correctly and it gives me this error. And this is something that if I'm using a traditional remote desktop, I can't fix. I just have to trigger the whole computer to restart and I can do that because I have it plugged into a smart power outlet. but. All I have to do is hit enter, and with the KVM system, this is a non-issue. I just hit enter, and it takes me to the system. Uh, but that error will break my sunshine and moonlight setup. And again, the only solution is to actually go into Home Assistant and trigger uh, the power on and off. So here I've got my system, and again, other than audio, uh, full access to the computer. Everything seems to work pretty well. So I do have to redo my display setup because even though um, the TV is not on, it still thinks it's there. So let me get the mouse set up. There we go. All right, so, you know, if, if I were really gonna prep this system, if I were gonna be traveling for multiple days, I probably would actually unplug my other monitors because that would just make it much less of a hassle. Um, the, the system would only have one monitor output to detect, but, you know, this, this is still great. It, it's super usable. Again, the, uh, the speed of the interface is great. And again, I, I've got, you know, sunshine down here set up that if I do need to edit videos, I can always fire up moonlight. And, you know, again, I don't have to do remoting into the computer and, you know, you know, 
for me, the huge benefit is I can now leave my desktop locked and, and have a way to still access everything. All right, well, there you have it. The Jet KVM, it's, it's a nice little unit. Um, I am pretty happy that I bought this thing. Now, again, after shipping, it's like 90 bucks. This is not a free solution. Uh, the upside compared to a lot of other stuff is this is not an operating system controlled solution. And so I can change operating systems. So if I'm doing something remotely and I need to switch into Windows to access some software, that's going to work. If I need to, you know, do something to the BIOS, if I get a hardware error that I need to deal with and it needs to be done outside the operating system in a BIOS configuration, I can do that. You know, you could, in theory, use this thing to actually totally install a computer remotely. So, um, you know, other things that I didn't mention along the way is I don't have to worry about whether or not this thing will do file transfers because I actually have a, a shared cloud drive on my home network. So I, I don't have a problem where I need a method to, you know, transfer files. I didn't test that. I don't think this thing allows anything like a drag and drop file interface to the remote computer, but I don't have that issue because I have a home NAS. And so any files I need to transfer, I already have a solution for that. Um, the big thing I, I was trying to solve is using the remote desktops, I had to leave my desktop unlocked and auto logged in. Uh, for Fedora because I'm using Wayland and that was a problem. This solves that. The Jet KVM totally solves that problem. And so I'm pretty happy with it. If you've got any questions or comments, I will try to answer them. I am not an expert on KVM devices and I am certainly not an expert on this particular one yet, but my initial impressions are this thing's great. And for the money, it is well worth it. Any other KVM system I've seen has been way more expensive and this thing seems to do the job. So with that, I appreciate your time. Thanks.